شاهنامه استوریز The Seven Labors of Rustam هفت خانه رستم The Battle with the White Deaf Part 1 Rustam's seventh labor is the most frequently illustrated scene of the Shahnameh. His fight with the White Deaf is the dramatic climax of the trials of the Shahnameh's greatest hero and the iconic image of the Haft Khan. Most importantly, it is the poetic and pictorial allegory of the Shahnameh's central message of the struggle of good against evil and the moral imperative of good to vanquish evil. There are over 300 known illustrations of this story, produced between the 14th and 19th centuries and the subject continues to fascinate, even today in contemporary art. The white demon, Diva Sefid in Persian, whom we met when he blinded and imprisoned the King Kekavus, was the chieftain of the Deves of Mazandaran, and lived in a deep dark cave far away from the capital. Skilled in sorcery and magic, he possessed great physical strength that made him Rostam's most challenging adversary. The White Deaves' underground lair is the setting of the seventh and final labor. Guided by Ulad, Rostam, having killed Arjang Deev, gallops to reach the cave where the blinded Kekovus and his retinue were imprisoned. The relieved and grateful Shah embraced him, but warned that once the white div heard that Rostam had killed Arjang Div, he would come for him, and that the earth would be overrun with the demon armies. Our warrior's eyes are darkened with sorrow, he went on, and I live sightless and bewildered. The only hope is the balm made from the blood of the white demon. Three drops placed like tears into our eyes will banish blindness. But to find and kill him, Rostam would have to continue on the perilous journey. There are yet seven mountains to cross with demons at every stage, he told the hero. And then the horrifying cave, a dark pit filled with terrors, will appear. The entrance will be crowded by warrior demons who fight like leopards. And there inside, you will find the white demon. After Rostam had passed the seven mountains, the white deaf's cave with its hideous guardians appeared before his eyes. Ulad advised that he wait until noon when the demons crowded at the entrance would fall asleep. That way, he would be able to enter the cave and get to the sleeping monster inside without any further obstacles. As soon as the sun reached its peak, Rostam once again tied Ulad to a tree and proceeded towards the cavern. In all manuscripts, the Seven Khan takes place in a landscape setting. The earliest illustrations, dating from the 14th century, are small and with room only for the cave outlined in a simple band of mountains and Raksh and the tied-up Ulad waiting outside. Rostam wears a gold helmet with ear guards of elaborate double roundels that, as we shall see, will change over the next centuries. As the painted surface increases from the second part of the 14th century onwards, so does the mountainscape surrounding the cave. There is smoldering colour and writhing movement and the sponge-like rocks that weigh down on the dark, cramped, airless cave where in Ferdowsi's words, there is no room to move nor escape. The front of the deep's cave is removed to reveal the inside, so that the observer sees a roughly circular black area surrounded by jagged rock formations, inside which Rostam stabs the white deep. Several depict a separate, usually oval entry to the side of the cave, around which the menacing guardian deeds frolic, loiter, create a ruckus, 
Ole did. Although both Kekavus and the narrative mention the horde of guardian deeves outside the white deeves' lair, it is only from the 16th century onwards that the artists use the opportunity of livening up the scene with polychrome demons. The guardian deeves come in a variety of bright colours, including yellow, blue, green, orange, red and pink, that infuses the scene with a sense of fun and playfulness as they scamper about, fly or swing from trees. These deeves are depicted as running or crawling away, kneeling, asking for mercy, hiding, peeking into the cave or threatening from a safe distance. Moreover, even though Rostam is said to enter the cave once he has killed all the guardian deeves, the interior is sometimes crowded with more deeves, in addition to those that peer in from above and around as if it were transparent. While the narrative has only the white deeve and Rostam in the pitch black cave, many illustrations are further embellished with superfluous paraphernalia, such as jugs and bowls, and even a trophy platter of two severed heads. In this bright, noisy and lyrical painting, far from being all dead, colourful demons make merry among the chirpy plants that sway and chatter cheekily in between the rambunctious deeves. Inside the cave, a beige deeve communicates his displeasure at his cut-off legs to the group of five unhelpful demons outside through the invisible window in the rocks. Above, five other deeves, with seeming disregard and lack of interest in the plight of their leader, romp and rollick in front of the tied-up ulad. At the very top, perched in a tree, a bright orange deeve with pointy ears looks down at the plummeting black deeve flapping in vain to latch onto the branches of the tree. His panic expressed by the startled, open-leaf hands of the plane tree from which he tumbles. The inspiration for many of these guardian deeves, and in particular the flying deeve that appears in the next slide as well, can be seen in this extraordinary early 16th century painting. In this delicate landscape of gorgeous flora, fauna and spiralling Chinese-like clouds, Humans, demons and animals mingle around the pit of hell in which Rostam stabs the white deeve. The spongy rocks that will become brighter and bolder in the later paintings here swirl and stream, each boulder bulging in its own subtle shade on and around which the odd-looking demons lounge and loiter. The charming chatty flowers that squabble beneath the feet of the fleeing brick-coloured deev, the animated tree whose distraught leaves highlight the youthful Ulad's exquisitely communicated distress, and the unusual portrayal of Rostam in old age, suggest the guidance and hand of the supreme master Sultan Muhammad. However, these demons do not have the feisty zaniness of his deeves in the Tahmas Shahnameh to be his. Here, the artist has turned the bloody battle into a rollicking game of hide-and-seek. As a blue deev flies above, another pops out from the cave entry to scare Rostam from behind, as the jolly white deev with one arm at his side and the other raised in the air greets him with a jingly highland dance, even as Rostam spoils his performance by slicing off his leg, much to the indignation of the hissing snake tail. In another double entry cave, the white deev who is painted closer to his narrative description lies among severed demon heads while others watch worriedly with the finger of surprise to their mouths and branches lash and lean noisily. While the guardian deeves afforded the artists the opportunity to expand the subject beyond the main action 
and dramatically enhance the liveliness of the story, in this most unusual depiction of the spectators of the dramatic duo, the artist has taken the most astonishing creative license. On the outside, an array of demon physiognomies peer from under the shrill spikes of leaves echoed in the halo of jagged blue rocks that encircle the pit. However, inside, none is more delightfully out of place than the moon-faced damsel staring demurely into the stomping severed leg. In the next video, we shall accompany Rostam as he plunges himself into the darkness of the white deeds lair.